excuse you, Mr. President, and fellow members of the committee. I promise that if I am appointed prom chairman, I will arrange the most brilliant affair in this school's history. Hear, hear. You mean how, how? <laughs> the class will dance to the coolest band in town, feast on a dazzling array of delicious refreshments, and enjoy all this in a setting decorated to look like a veritable fairyland. I thank you. Mr. President. Sue Ellen. Let's face it. No matter what Patty promises, the class knows that for their $3 a couple, they'll get their choice of either the Flatbush Five or stale chopped egg sandwiches in the school gym. <laughs> oh, wait a minute. Nevertheless, if I'm appointed chairman, I promise that everyone will positively be at the prom. Why should they? Because my father is president of a bank, and he knows a lot of celebrities. I guarantee that one of them will appear as our guest. Patty, what have you got to say to that? Well, uh... I, I didn't hear you, Patty. She said, well, uh... <laughs> uh, I promise that if I'm appointed prom chairman, my father, Martin Lane, managing editor of the New York Chronicle, will guarantee that the guest celebrity will be the biggest single name in show business. Who's that? Who's that? Uh, I'm not at liberty to divulge that name right now. Because she's bluffing. <laughs> All right. You both have until tomorrow at three when I name the prom chairman. See you then. Thanks, Walter. Coming? See you later. Know something, darling? I don't think you have anybody. You won't know until tomorrow afternoon, will you? <laughs> Boy, you sure told her off. I sure did. By the way, who'd you get for the prom? How am I supposed to know? <laughs> Live most everywhere, from Zanzibar to Barclay Square. But Patty's only seen the sights a girl can see from Brooklyn Heights. What a crazy pair! But they're cousins, identical cousins all the way. One pair of matching bookends, different as night and day. Where Kathy adores a minuet, the ballet russe. And Crepe Suzette. Our Patty loves to rock and roll. A hot dog makes her lose control. What a wild duet. Still they're cousins. Identical cousins and you find. They laugh alike. They walk alike. At times they even talk alike. You can lose your mind. When cousins. from you is one teeny weeny little celebrity. Can't you see that, Papa? Patty, I'm no Walter Winchell. I don't come in contact with what you call celebrities. But I promised you'd come up with one. Well, then you've learned a lesson. In the future, don't make promises on behalf of other people. Patty, why is it so important that you be chairman of the dance? Because I feel I can do a better job of it. If I run it, we're going to have a ball. If she runs it, we're going to have a bomb. Only if I don't get a name, I'll never be able to prove that to them. You could look through the newspaper and see what celebrities are in town and call them. That's a great idea. You see, she's always thinking. Thanks, cuz. I'll do it right now. Excuse me. Kathy, why do you waste your good ideas on her? I can turn them into money. <laughs> I hope she gets the chairmanship. Well, if it depends on her coming up with a celebrity, I wouldn't count on it. Oh, don't underestimate Patty, Uncle Martin. You have no idea how resourceful she is. Yes, I have, and it terrifies me. Oh. No, no, he wouldn't recognize my name. Well, then, would you please tell him that there's this high school prom, and I... Hello? 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 Snob. <laughs> Bobby Darren. Oh, 
<laughs> Have you called anyone yet? Yeah, you can forget Bobby Darren. He's too short. Patty, I have to study. Would you mind turning that off, please? What's the mop singing? The mop? What's that? Oh, look, Kathy. I know you're an opera lover, but everybody's heard of the mop. I'm afraid I haven't. What is it? Oh, look at him, Kathy. Isn't he the bitter? He looks like a sheepdog. <laughs> Don't you dare call Bertram Bristol a sheepdog. Bertram Bristol? Mm-hmm. That's his name. Bertram Bristol. Patty, may I see that album, please? Oh, I don't believe it. You don't believe what? <laughs> it can't be. But it is. What are you talking about? Binky Bristol. A boy I used to know. You knew the mop? When I went to school in England, we were classmates. You and Bertram Bristol? Yes. He had quite a crush on me. He always used to want to carry my books home from school. Oh, Kathy. I remember one night, he stood outside and serenaded me with his guitar. <gasps> what did you do? I'm afraid I let go with a pail of water. Even then, he couldn't sing. Kathy! Oh, Binky didn't mind. Imagine. Now he's the latest fad. Bertram Bristol is no fad. Look, look at the paper. He just arrived in New York. Look at all the kids at his hotel. It's incredible. Oh, to be in England now that Binky's here. <laughs> well, Kathy, you are going to see him, aren't you? What for? To find out if he's still pining for you. Of course not. Kathy, I just got the most marvelous idea. You want me to phone Binky at his hotel and ask him to come to the prom and sing a few songs. Right. Wrong. I won't do it. You have to. Patty Binky probably won't even remember me. And I'm sure he's far too busy. Look, Kathy, we're cousins, aren't we? And best friends. I'd do anything for you. Yes, Patty. If you were on a ship and fell overboard, wouldn't I jump in to save you? Yes, Patty. And if you were in a burning building, wouldn't I rush in to pull you out? Yes, Patty. And if you were starving, wouldn't I offer to share my last crust of bread? Yes, Patty. Then don't you think it's about time you did something for me? <laughs> she won't budge. I don't get it. After all you've done for her, why is Kathy so stubborn? Because she has the soul of a mule. It's such a small favor. Of course it is. Look, if I were Kathy, I'd do it in a minute. Richard? What did I just say? Um, of course it is. No, no, no. After that. If you were Kathy, you'd do it in a minute. That's exactly what I said. Richard, shake hands, but genius. Huh? Sorry to be late. Well, you know why we're here today. Uh, yes, indeed. Are you ready to name this big star you can bring to the dance? Of course. Mr. President, if I'm appointed prom chairman, my first official act will be to announce that the guest celebrity will be none other than Bertram Bristol. Bertram Bristol? In person. The mop? <laughs> oh. What did you bring? Forget it. <laughs> Patty, you've got the job. Thank you, Mr. President. Are, are you sure you can deliver him? Of course. He's an old friend of the family. Uh, Patty... Come on, Richard. We mustn't keep dear Binky waiting. Binky? Mm-hmm. That's what his friends call him. Ta-ta. Wait a minute. How do we know Patty's telling the truth? Because Patty wouldn't tell a lie. That's right. She has too much character and integrity. That's right. And because she knows if she doesn't deliver the mop now, the class will tear her limb from limb. <laughs> Right. Here it is, 1492. Oh, that's the year 
Columbus discovered America. Maybe that's a good luck omen. Hey, do you think this is really going to work? Sure, when I called from the lobby, he said to come right up. Only he thought he was talking to Kathy. Will you stop splitting hairs? He shook my hand. Oh. Now, how can anyone be so Hector? He's just another ordinary human being. Yeah. Uh, are you sure you don't want me to go in there with you, Patty? Well, positive. I can handle the spine by myself. I'll see you later. Okay. Come in. Cool, look who's here. Oh, what's wrong, Kath? Nothing. It's nice to see you again, Mr. Bristol. Yeah, Mr. Bristol, come on, Kath. Look, it's me, the old finger. Yes, of course. Hello, Binky. <laughs> That's more like it. Here, here, let's have a look at you. <laughs> oh, you're beautiful. Am I? Yeah. I like your hair, too. I love yours. <laughs> let's have a bit of a talk, shall we? Come on, now. Do you want a drop of tea? No, thank you. Well, no tea. That doesn't sound like my Kathy. Oh, I'd love a cup. Yeah, of course. That's more like it. Here you are, dear. Oops. Little milk. Yeah. Well, it's been a long time, ducks. Hasn't it, though? Did you ever hear from any of the old gang? Old gang? Yeah, you know, Addie and Pat. Oh, Addie and Pat. <laughs> Do you remember that night in the hall when I tried to kiss you? I did. Why would you like living here in the States, eh? I love it. I live with my father's brother, Uncle Martin. And I go to school with my cousin, Patty. What a doll. Is she now? You'd love her. Yeah? Oh, I wish I had time to meet her. I think I could arrange that. Binky? My school is giving a dance, and I was hoping you could drop by. Oh, I'd like that, Kath. Honest, I would. Then you come? I just haven't got the time, old girl. Oh, you could just come and say hello and then run. Oh, I'm much too busy, Kath. You see, there's this new album and rehearsing for the telly and... Oh, cool. Blimey, there it goes again. Be back in a jiff. Oh, but... Now what am I going to do? And because she knows if she doesn't deliver the mop now, class will tear her limb from limb. Walter, honest, I tried. It's not my fault. And let this be a lesson to you. In the future, don't make promises on behalf of other people. Now you tell me. You could look through the newspaper and see what celebrities are in town and call them. You and your bright ideas. You're the one who got me into this in the first place. Were you talking to me? Oh, no. I was, uh... Coming. Mm -hmm. Yeah, do you know that was on the phone? George Bassett. Good old George Bassett. How is he? Well, do you know him then? I never heard of him. Oh. Neither have I. <laughs> well, whoever he was, he tried to put the bite on me for 50 pounds. He did? Yeah, happens to me all the time now. I'm rich and famous. I am more hard luck stories. Hard luck stories? Yeah. And you know how soft-hearted I am. I can't never say no. Binky, I didn't want to tell you this before, but you know the dance my school is giving? It's practically a matter of life or death. Life or death? It's being given to raise money for someone who's in terrible trouble. Someone very dear to me. Yeah, not your uncle. He lost his job months ago, replaced by a machine. Oh, poor old blighter. Hasn't he gotten any money saved? Oh, not a penny. He's a terrible spendthrift. Well, that's a bit dodgy, isn't it? That's why we're having the dance, to raise enough money so that we won't starve. Well, why didn't you tell me this before, Kath? I was too embarrassed. Well, to tell your troubles to the old Binker? Binky, if I announced that you'd be at the dance, 
Everyone in school will buy tickets. And Uncle Martin will be saved. Yes. You try and keep me away. <laughs> I mean, thanks ever so. You're the bitter. Oh, uh, here's the address of my school. Yes. <laughs> now, you come there a week from Saturday at 9 o'clock. All right, 9 o'clock it is then. Thank you, Binky. You're wonderful. So are you, Kath. You're all right. <sighs> <laughs> this should sell a million tickets. It's going to be the most successful prom the school's ever had. It sure was nice of Kathy to get him, wasn't it? Yeah. Hello, Patty. Oh, hi, Kath. We were just talking about you. Were you? Mm hmm Tell me, Patty. I'm dying to know. How did you ever get Bingy to agree to come? Oh, I just went over to his hotel and asked him. And he said yes, just like that? Mm-hmm. Well, you know, all actors are hams. Patty's uh, pretty persuasive. Did you tell him we're cousins? Uh, yeah, I think I did mention it. I think I'll call him. No! I don't think you should do that. Why not? Uh, well, Kathy, he, uh, he didn't remember you. He didn't. I'm surprised. We were rather close. Well, you know how it is. Well, he's met millions of people. He's a celebrity. Everyone's after him. Well, I'm not. And I'm certainly not going to phone him. That's a good idea. But when I see him at the dance, I'm going to tell him exactly what I think of him. What did the man say? Oh, what a tangled web we weave. He was right. You know, Richard, I think I've done it again. If Pinky Bristol shows up at the dance, Kathy's gonna hate me. And if he doesn't show up, limb from limb. It's 9.15. He's late. I know. He's not coming. I can feel it. Why couldn't I let Sue Ellen be chairman? Why'd I get up this morning? Why was I born? Patty, cut it out. You're getting hysterical. Here he comes. Here I am, Kath. Sorry I'm late. I'll come straight on from rehearsals. Can't stop long, though. Okay. Like your hair that way. Oh. Uh, I wear it this way for parties. Oh, uh, Binky, this is Richard Harrison. Uh, like I. Oh, hi. Well, uh, is he yours? No, no, he belongs to my cousin, Kath, Patty. <laughs> oh, if you wait right there, I'll go introduce you. Hello, students. Fasten your seatbelt. He's here. The one and only Bertram Bristol.
lovers. <laughs> I would like to say one thing, and that is that I wouldn't have been here at all tonight if it wasn't for my dear old friend, Kathy Lane. So thanks a lot, you've been a lovely audience. Ta-da! <laughs> Oh, girl. Lovely bunch of kids out there. Yes. I certainly do appreciate your coming here, but I know you must run along now, so goodbye, Binky. Cool, blimey, it's a blooming mirage. <laughs> you didn't tell me your cousin Patty was your spitting image. I'm Kathy. And the reason I didn't tell you about my cousin Patty is because I haven't seen you until just now. You mean... I lost my head. Patty, how could you do a thing like this? I'm sorry, Kath. I, I apologize, Mr. Bristol. You see, when, when Kathy wouldn't go to see you, I couldn't figure out any other way to get to you. So I posed as Kathy. So it was you who come to my suite. And you mean to tell me you weren't going to call on your old friend, Binky? Pinky, I thought that you... You've got a lot to thank your cousin for. Come on, late. Come on. We can talk over old times at rehearsals. Rehearsal? Yeah, for a television show. Come on, we'd better be going now. But I... Don't fight it, Kath. Fifty million women are dying to take your place. All right. Cheers, old girl. You've done a good deed. It was the best evening of my whole life. Sure were a smash. Imagine being made permanent prom chairman. Gee, who are you going to get next year? Maybe the president. You know what's so great, Rich? I pulled the whole thing off without getting in trouble. Patty! Hi, Mamo. Papo. Hi. How was the dance? A blast. Martian green. Well, that's nice. Patty, I just got this note. Now, it says, uh, keep your chin up, Governor. And there was a check for $100 enclosed. Can you explain that? Oh, no. <laughs> Here's your supper, sis. Oh, thank you, Rose. Put on that bed. You're lucky it isn't bread and water. I deserve it. How long are you in for? Six months, with time out for good behavior. Oh, here comes the warden. Excuse me, son. Yes, sir. I'll go downstairs and ask Mom to bake you a cake with a file on <laughs> Can the prisoner make a statement? Yes. I'm sorry. My only excuse is I got carried away. Patty, I understand that what you were doing was for a um, worthy cause, but you behaved outrageously. I acted like a gleep. You lied to Mr. Bristol, you imposed on him shamefully, and you put me in a very embarrassing situation. Yes, sir. So, until further notice, there will be no dates for you. Yes, sir. And I am confiscating all of these albums. This household has heard the last flat note from that British nightingale. Yes, sir. Never leave me. Oh, 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 don't deceive me. Oh, Who the devil put that on? I don't know. Listen. Oh, 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 mason. Will you throw that thing out of here? Hold your case and oh, 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 open up your heart. Open up your heart. Open up Uncle your Martin, heart. Uncle Martin, look who I brought home to dinner. <laughs> Here's Kathy.
Dorothy, who's lived most everywhere, from Zanzibar to Barclay Square. But Patty's only seen the sights a girl can see from Brooklyn Heights. What a crazy pair. But they're cousins, identical cousins, and you'll find. They laugh alike, they walk alike, at times they even talk alike. You can lose your mind when cousins are two of a kind. Mr. President, and fellow members of the committee, I promise that if I am appointed prom chairman, I will arrange the most brilliant affair in this school's history. Hear, hear. You mean how, how. <laughs> the class will dance to the coolest band in town, feast on a dazzling array of delicious refreshments, and enjoy all this in a setting decorated to look like a veritable fairyland. I thank you. Mr. President. Mr. Wallen. Let's face it, no matter what Patty promises, the class knows that for their $3 a couple, they'll get their choice of either the Flatbush Five or stale chopped egg sandwiches in the school gym. <laughs> oh, wait a minute. Nevertheless, if I'm appointed chairman, I promise that everyone will positively be at the prom. Why should they? Because my father is president of a bank, and he knows a lot of celebrities. I guarantee that one of them will appear as our guest. Patty, what have you got to say to that? Well, uh... I, I didn't hear you, Patty. She said, well, uh... <laughs> uh, I promise that if I'm appointed prom chairman, my father, Martin Lane, managing editor of the New York Chronicle, will guarantee that the guest celebrity will be the biggest single name in show business. Who's that? Who's that? Uh, I'm not at liberty to divulge that name right now. Because she's bluffing. <laughs> All right. You both have until tomorrow at three when I name the prom chairman. See you then. Thanks, Walter. Coming? See you later. Know something, darling? I don't think you have anybody. You won't know until tomorrow afternoon, will you? <laughs> Boy, you sure told her off. I sure did. By the way, who'd you get for the prom? How am I supposed to know? <laughs> Who's lived most everywhere, from Zanzibar to Barclay Square? But Patty's only seen the sights 